Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, and in this video, I'm just going to take a look at two new proving units uh, that I've purchased uh, against my existing proving unit from Fluke. So this Fluke unit is the PRV 240 FS. I've reviewed this unit before, and I'll stick links in the description below on the previous videos. Uh, basically, this unit can do AC and DC at 240 volts uh, and it also has the field sense function and also a test lead function as well on this point here if you've got uh, fused test leads. Uh, so this unit retails in the UK for around about £141. It is also available without this field sense and test lead contact. Uh, as the PRV240 unit and that retails for a slightly less money at £138. It takes four AA batteries with around about 2,000 test cycles. Um, it is also, I didn't mention, it's actually a 60 hertz output on the AC as opposed to 50 hertz that we used to in the UK. Um, and this, you can only load this up to a one mega ohm. So you can't use it on units with a low input impedance for removing ghost voltages. Um, comes just really as the unit, as a boxed unit um, with a couple of accessories. It's got the Velcro strap here with a magnet or a clip to go around, go to work. Or indeed uh, this type of clip here which goes into the rubber holsters, I believe this one. Um, and that's my existing unit. I have had issues with this, uh, henceforth I installed on-off switch but that it doesn't come with to reduce the drain on the batteries as they weren't lasting very long. Um, I think somebody said it probably looked like the microprocessor inside wasn't switching into low current mode or sleep mode um, when the unit wasn't in use. Um, so that's my existing unit, that's pretty much what I carry around with me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I've bought two other units for two other tool bags that I utilize. The first one is from Socket and C here. Um, Socket and C are, I believe they are the in-house brand for AccuTest instruments in the UK, who are more a calibration and instrument supplier, but they do seem to have their own instrument brand, uh, predominantly aimed at BS761 inspections, really. Um, it's quite a limited range that they offer. But this particular one resells for £120, recommended retail price. It has AC only output and that is up to 690 volts. But uh, for again for the low impedance input instruments, it will only go up to 230 volts maximum. It does have here a test facility for non-contact voltage pens. Um, and that's this one here, six. AA cells, this one takes as opposed to four. It is a 50 hertz output on this, uh, as opposed to 60 hertz with the Fluke, but there is no DC function, as I already said. Um, 10 watt output capability, and it says nominal 10 hours use. It doesn't give me a number of test cycles on this one, but usually you only operate these for 10 seconds or so. So that's that one there, uh, and this one here is from Martindale. And this is the PD440SX uh, proving unit combined with CalCheck. Um, again, this one is AC only output, uh, up to 440 volts on this one. Uh, the, this particular version is retails for around about £110. You can get it without the CalCheck on there for £91. I set this up to 440 volts, but they do make a version that goes up to 690 volts, uh, which is 119 pounds with the cow check or 105 pounds without the cow check on there. Uh, this particular one is six AA cells, uh, two watt output. So again, this one will probably struggle with low impedance instruments. Okay, this one, this one does come with a magnet and a Velcro strap similar to the Fluke one, whereas the socket and seeds that come with any accessories at all. I have installed a belt clip on the back of it here myself, 
uh, just onto the battery case there um, so I can clip that into uh, the Vito bags. Okay, so, so we'll just go for the Fluke unit first. I'm on AC DC mode uh, with the Mega there. Okay, so we've got 254 volts there. Uh, output, well, that's DC. Let's, uh, Two hundred and forty-four volts AC there, and you see it just comes out as a straight two hundred and forty volts. There's no ramp up or ramp down of this unit, and I can also bring this one over to field sense on here, uh, and I can check an on-contact voltage tester with this as well. Um, so that's the fluke in operation there. Um, we'll bring it in socket and C unit and now my voltage pen is working so I can just uh, push the button in here and you can see it lights up my tester all okay and this unit does go straight to 6 or 690 volts when you're pressing in the NCV test and for a meter test you can see hopefully You can see this one actually ramps up, and we've got the full and ramps back down again. So this does go up to full 690 volts. And so that's that one in operation, and then finally we can uh, utilize our Martindale unit here, and again. Press our button in, and this is straight up to 432 volts on the 440 volts, and this one does also count down as well, back down to zero there. So both the socket and C and the Martindale give you a ramp up and down on the tests. No NCV test with this one, uh, but we do have a resistance test. So we can flip him round to the resistance reading there and on these this is a bit like a cal card I can uh, do the one ohm although I haven't zeroed these leads so Let's see what we get back uh, 1.18 ohms there and we've also got 0.5 of an ohm and we've got that on 0.69 there let's just uh, try what we are on zero What's that one? 0.20 or 0.19. Uh, so if you subtracted that from the readings, you'll be very close to the 1 ohm and the 0.5 ohm there. Um, so that's continuity function there. And what I'll do is you've got four wire test on this as well, so I'll check that out. But first we'll just flip back up to insulation test. We'll do this on 500 volts. And I've got a 0.5 mega ohm. And a one mega ohm there as well. So plug it on there. 0.52 on that one. So 0 0.50 dead on. And then on the one mega ohm. 0 0.02. It's back on one mega ohm. So just got a quick demo of this in four wire resistance mode as well, because these probe tips will just go on to these contacts on the, uh, that's the 0 0.5 ohm oh, I didn't put it into auto Four point four nine two nine. that's pretty good isn't it go up to the 1 ohm there Four point nine eight eight one ohms so pretty accurate Resistance check from Martindale. 
So that's the three proving units there. The guidance that I have for using these units is that the output of the unit should at least match or exceed the voltage of the circuit that I'm working on. So I would only really use, I should only really use this unit on 240 volt circuits, um, standard domestic or light commercial installations, predominantly for me. Let's see the socket and C unit that goes up to 690 volts, covers all the industrial installations that I work on. Um, 690 is it's very rarely used in the UK. I've seen it on a couple of installations, but it is quite rare. Uh, the 441 unit here from Martindale, uh, that's the more common voltage that I work on on industrial installations. But this one, I'm going to stick in my main testing bag and the Martindale here, I'm going to utilize that on a small loadout for testing motors. Uh, yeah, those are three proving units, obviously different approach from each of the manufacturers. I don't believe Martindale make anything with a non-contact voltage tester such as the Fluke and the Socket NC there. Although you can, if you have a uh, instrument such as the Q-Tech here that will actually fit into the test terminal, you can actually get it to work like that and it will. You can test a non-contact voltage tester in that manner. And a multi-comp here that doesn't fit in. If I press the unit in with a probe, you can see you can get it to work that way. Uh, so that's uh, a little get around if necessary. Uh, you don't have one of these that you can just uh, do a non-contact voltage test on, should you desire. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously the Martindale here has a little cow check testing the resistance and the insulation test function. Um, so that's quite useful around motors where I use the insulation test and the continuity test for winding resistance. Uh, so that's all there is for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next video.